What's up YouTube? We're going to dig into some vintage Kenner Star Wars sales prices in a second. A quick reminder, if you have a large collection of vintage Star Wars toys to sell, you can reach out to me by email at, at actionfiguregrader at gmail.com and I'll put you in touch with some folks that are looking to buy collections. No collection is too big or too small. I don't get anything out of it, but I try to hook up buyers and sellers and uh, it's just a good way to avoid eBay fees or any kind of taxes, things like that. Okay, let's dig into some awesome vintage Kenner Star Wars stuff that sold recently on eBay. What's up YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another vintage Star Wars market update. We're gonna focus only on graded and ungraded mint on card items that have sold here recently. Everything from early card backs all the way to the droids and Ewoks line. So I'm covering the gamut. Before I dig in any further, I need to say thank you to Justin Mabin. Uh, he is my latest Patreon supporter. Thanks so much to all my Patreon supporters. You guys allow the channel to happen. I try to release videos to Patreon supporters 24 hours early. Patreon.com slash action figure grader. Thanks again, Justin. I've known Justin for quite a while now and uh, really kind of you to become a Patreon supporter. Okay, let's dig in. We've got, first of all, an AFA 80 20 back Luke X Wing pilot. What a gorgeous item this is. It was punched, no price sticker. Uh, and here are the subgrades card was 75, blister 85, figure 85. It's got that beautiful free FET offer. And this is the 20 back X. And going back to my video from Sunday, I have no idea what the differences are, but this one still has the rocket firing backpack sticker before they covered it up with a bunch of different offers and, or, you know, just black stickers. But uh, what an awesome item. Very early Luke X Wing. That one sold for $1,048. Big money, 32 bids. Now, again, I, I think in a different time, six or nine months ago, this might have been closer to $1,500. So I, I do think the price has come down a little bit. Maybe what held the price down was the fact that it was punched and it did have a 75 subscore. Th those two factors could have played a role there, but 1,048 still a pretty solid number for a nice, beautiful 20 back Luke X-Wing. Here was an ungraded 20 back E R5D4. This is when I was watching with particular interest. It was very tempting. Uh, there was a little bit of wear around the hang tab, as you can see there. It was obviously got some damage to that hang tab area. The rest of the card was in pretty good condition, just some light creases overall. The blister was in fantastic shape. The uh, figure itself looked great. Here's the close-up of the figure. Nice and clean. Um, just a little bit of maybe crinkle to the upper right-hand corner of the blister. It did have a price sticker there, as you can see. I think it would probably grade a 75, just because of that uh, damage around the hang tab there, though. Uh, that one sold for $5.95. I thought that was a pretty good price. One bid. Nobody else bid on that one, but I think that's a pretty good price, really, for uh, for what it is and for the damage it has. Uh, now, here's an interesting one. We just documented on the channel an AFA 85 Takara 7-inch Chewbacca. That was listed for $1,900, and nobody bid on it. This was an AFA 60, so quite a bit lower grade, and it sold for $1,115 and change, 28 bids. This closed on August 31st. Now, I do think it's interesting, though. Yeah, this is an AFA 60, and you know, if you pay a little bit more, a lot more, uh, at 1900 was the starting price for an AFA 85 near mint plus condition for this very rare Japanese seven inch che Chewbacca, but no one bid on that. So I, I, th I think it is interesting that for the lower grade, it, it still commanded a pretty massive price. And the fact that nobody bid on one, that was absolutely flawless. So I, don't, I can't read the market at all. I would have guessed that, that given the condition and the grade that this one had, versus the AFA 85 that didn't sell at 1900. I was expecting kind of eight to 900 ish, but it sold at 1115. Not, I'm not discounting the fact that this is an incredible item. This, cause it is, it's a, it's a beautiful seven inch Takara. Very, very rare, very tough to find. You can see the creasing on the back of the card there that is color breaking. Uh, but you know, uh, 1115 versus the one at 1900, that was an 85. I, yeah, I'm really surprised that nobody ponied up for that AFA 85 example. Uh, here was another beautiful one. This was the rectangular card Meccano 20 back. This was an AFA 80 Ben Kenobi, really nice one. Uh, it looks like the blister had yellowed since grading. Uh, the grading label did not note the yellowing on the blister, but you can see in the upper left there, it might have just a little bit of yellowing going on, but whatever, this is a gorgeous item. Now the seller did disclose in the description that he wasn't gonna be responsible for any damages. So 
for me, I'm not kind of I'm not going to bid on anything like that because these Meccano Square cards have very very fragile blisters, and you know I I just wouldn't feel comfortable bidding on somebody on on an item where the seller's not willing to stand behind it. But uh, it didn't stop the bidding at all. Clearly, it's, it's sold for one thousand six hundred and two dollars. So. A uh, pretty good deal. Now, you know, the Kenobi's not terribly hard to find. It's not easy to find like the Jawa. Uh, it's probably, you know, in the same realm as like the Death Squad Commander. Uh, those are probably the two next most common square card Meccanos. And then you start getting into some really big boy prices uh, for, for some of the others that are much more difficult to find. But the Kenobi, the Death Squad Commander, and the Jawa are, th are the three relative easiest ones to find. But still, this was a very high grade example. And it and the price certainly reflected that. Uh, this was an interesting one. This was the 12 inch Chewbacca, but this one had the Empire Strikes Back packaging. So very difficult to find that. Um, I, it might be the first time I've ever seen that ever for sale on eBay. It was an AFA qualified 40, so it was no longer mint and sealed box, but you know that's a very, very rare item. And of course the price reflected the fact that finding these 12 inch figures inside of the Empire Strikes Back packaging is very difficult to do, if not impossible. Uh, but that that uh, was again graded qualified 40. That sold for three thousand six hundred and one dollars. So, very rare. That might be the only. Uh, we may never see this ever again for sale on eBay. I mean, usually this is the kind of item that you would see only on Hakes. But uh, a, a really cool item to see sell at auction. Uh, there was a bunch of other Lukes that sold here recently, mainly Empire Strikes Back Luke Bespins. This was an ungraded example. This one sold for $575. This one was the 32 back. And, uh, you know, I had the Luke looking photo, blonde hair. So $575 took that one home. Looked to be in pretty good shape overall. And then two different 48 backs sold. This one was a clear blister, AFA 75. Revenge of the Jedi 48 back. That sold for 560. I thought that was a great price for a clear blister. Um, you can see here that the, the torso has discolored, which is very common for those brown haired Lukes that came on the later ESP car backs. Uh, and then here was the other one. This was an AFA 85, but the blister had yellowed since grading. You can see how yellow that blister is versus the label that does not note that. So these, these blisters can still yellow inside the AFA case. But nevertheless, it's still a gorgeous example, unpunched, no price sticker. That sold for $1,313. Now, this had a clear blister. I think your price probably would have been closer to $1,500 to $1,800, somewhere in that ballpark. But uh, because it yellowed after grading, uh, that, that brought the price down just a little bit. But that, don't get me wrong, that's still a very, very high price for a Luke Bestman. Uh, a couple of other Lukes that did sell. This was a 77 back A, AFA 85, yellowed blister, obviously, since most of these Return of the Jedi Luke's have yellow blisters. That one sold for $700. And, you know, as a, as a reference point, I think I have the 77 back A, AFA 85. And, you know, again, I bought that probably two or three years ago and I paid like 500. And at the time that was an overpay. And I might've paid 550, I can't remember now, but $700 is the new going price. But again, I, I think I overpaid at the time when I bought that one. And then another one that sold was an AFA 80 unpunched yellow blister 79 back. So here's the 79 back, 80, 85, 85 were the sub scores. Just, it's, it's literally next to impossible to find the Luke Jedi on a U.S. Kenner card back with a clear blister. I, I haven't seen one in a long time. <laughs> but that one sold for 475 That was a buy it now situation and it did not last long. It's, it was on the market for maybe two or three days before it finally did sell. Uh, next up, we've got some clippers. Uh, this is the Palatoy card with the Spanish, or, or excuse me, with the uh, uh, Clipper offer, uh, the, cl the Clipper wraparound offer sticker, and then it's got the Clipper catalog sticker on the back there. This is for the Squid Head. It was kind of beat up, probably an AFA 70 kind of quality. That sold for 133.50. You don't see these Clipper stickers. Uh, you don't see them very often for sale, uh, you know, at auction on eBay. So it was kind of cool to see a number of them sell from the same seller. Uh, this one was the Chief Chirpa. That sold for $156 and was in pretty good shape. A little bit of bending to the upper right-hand corner on the card back, but you can very clearly see that sticker that wraps around to the back, and you can see the, the catalog sticker there on the back as well. Uh, next up was the General Maydeen. That one sold for $317. That was unpunched and probably the best condition overall. A little bit of creasing on the, on the lower portion of the card back. Looks like it maybe has some cobwebs. I don't know. <laughs> But uh, that one did command a pretty good price. But uh, there are a lot of Maydeen focus collectors out there, believe it or not. I see them on, 
on Facebook all the time showing their collections. So General Maydean does have his fans. Let me tell you that. $317 plus shipping took that one home. And then there were a number of really nice tri-logos that sold. This was probably the least desirable one in terms of condition. But this is the Yoda with the brown snake. We just documented the uh, orange snake version that sold for over $800. With, that was a steal of a deal. But the brown snake is the more common one. You can see that blister has quite a bit of damage to it. Um, it was punched as well. Uh, it looks nice from that angle, but you know the, the seller did a pretty good job of showing the close-up of the damage to the blister. That one sold for $400 on 15 bids at auction on September 1st. Uh, next up was a gorgeous AFA 85 Darth Vader tri-logo. I was Chris over at Rogue 5 Toys on Facebook. He and I were both so uh, drooling over this one. We both wanted it really bad. Uh, really nice example. And uh, it was listed for $1,200 and I've received an offer from him for $1,100. And I, of course I didn't take it because I don't have that kind of money, but uh, it did sell very quickly after that. So I assume that whoever got that offer for $1,100 decided to buy it. I think that was a great buy because the Tri-Logo Darth Vader's, you know, they very regularly command, even ungraded, they can command four figures, $1,000 plus. So to get an AFA 85 for $1,100, that was a great buy. And this one did have the KB Toys two-for-one overstock sticker that a number of my examples do have. So this one was purchased here in the U.S. But 80, 85, 85 were the subscores for that Darth Vader. Really, really gorgeous example. That's the first AFA 85 tri-logo Vader I've seen in a long time. Finally, we got the really nice one. This was an unpunched mint-on-card yak face. Wow. You hardly ever see these come up for sale at auction, and the price did not disappoint. It was probably like a 75 plus, maybe a low 80 grade. Uh, I think that the blister, though, because of the blister damage, is probably more like a 70 or 75, somewhere in that ballpark. But it did not stop the bidding. That sold for $2,325. $2,300 for that Yak Face Mint on card. But, I mean, you know, again, what, how often do you, do you see a Tri-Logo Unpunched Yak Face Mint on card sell at auction? All right, we got some droids and Ewoks to round out the video. Uh, this was an Uncle Gunday, Uncle Gunday AFA-80, yellow blister, obviously, which a number of these droids ones are. This is the Canadian, Kenner Canada. You can see the French language there in the top of the card. It was unpunched. 80, 80, 85 were the subscores. This had the clear view AFA case with the grade up top there. But uh, really nice example for the Canadian Gundy. That sold for 510 Canadian or 389 US dollars plus shipping. The shipping was $61 from Canada. That's really high. But, uh, I, you know, I shipped off a few items here recently to some Canadian friends of mine, and they are expensive. I mean, it's, it's really gotten expensive to go international now. Uh, next up was an AFA 85 Jan Tosh. Really good example. This is the US card, unpunched, again with a yellow blister, but uh, that's a very high grade Jan Tosh. That sold for 810 Canadian which is 619 US dollars. So a lot of these droids card backs are really on the way up, especially if they're in really high grade condition like this. It's got a beautiful card back. I love the colors. It's great seeing all of those very uh, desirable droids figures on the back of the card. And then uh, here was, uh, what's his name, Kez, Kez Iban. And uh, he's often, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people take this one off the card because they want that blaster uh, to go to pair with the, the, uh, the Luke Stormtrooper. Uh, so a lot of people do take this one off the card, unfortunately. So it's getting tougher and tougher to find this one mint on card. But that one did sell for 305 Canadian or 233 U.S. dollars. Now, keep in mind that that blaster that goes with the Luke Stormtrooper, it can sell for more than $233 by itself. So, um, I, you know, I can understand that I can understand why people are doing it. I, I, I don't agree with it personally, but but, you know, given that the blaster itself can go for that price, you know, it's it, that's the reason why a lot of these Kezi bonds are, are not, you know, remaining mint on card. People are just ripping it right off the card, taking the blaster out, and then selling the remnants off. And they're getting caught. They're getting caught by a lot of Facebook groups and getting banned from groups for doing that because, you know, they see an item sell, and then uh, and then they track the, the photos of the item. And then, you know, three or six months later, when they try to sell the remnants, they can match it up based on the photos. So there's a lot of people out there watching with uh, very – very good eyes, and uh, they're just trying to prevent, I guess, people from from taking these things off the card. And, you know, look, I, I don't have a dog in the hunt because I would never take them off the card anyway, but there are people doing it. So uh, I can understand how some groups kind of get bent out of shape about it. Here's a, dig, a TIG from. This is obviously a uh, very clear blister. This was made in Mexico. I think that's what blacked out Ewoks over 
uh, on YouTube. Yeah, this is made in Mexico, as you can see in the, the bottom right-hand corner. The, it's the, the TIG from and the SICE from are, are both made in Mexico. So they tend to have clear blisters because the, the material used to make those blisters was a different kind of uh, product versus what is on a lot of the U.S. and, and Kenner Canada card backs. But uh, this is another figure that just continues to go up in price. You can see the damage around the hang tab there. It was unpunched, but it did have some creasing. But uh, it still sold for $950. $950. So, you know, mint on card, like 80 grade or, or above, um, it, it, it's always about four figures now between 1000 and 1200 if not higher, if it's graded. So uh, this one did have some damage, so that kept the price down just a little bit. It was only one bid. But uh, Tig From and Size From, Mint on Card, those are two of the figures that are kind of bucking the trend, so to speak, with regard to kind of a flattening of prices. And those, those two in particular continue to command big, big money. Anyway, that's all I really had for this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back soon.